It's no secret that the past 18 months or so have been difficult for everybody. With vaccination rollout currently at full pace, there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel for one industry in particular, tourism. We've all been dreaming of the first place we'll go when this is all over, right? Well, today we're looking at the best places you should travel to as the world opens back up. First off, why should you take a trip to the Ozarks? Natural beauty is a plenty in the northwest corner of Arkansas where you'll find the Ozark Mountains. This is one of the largest largest unspoilt wildernesses in the eastern states, so it'll come as no surprise that there are plenty of opportunities for hiking, mountain biking, and other activities. What sets this area apart, though, is how many activities there are, even if physical pursuits aren't your strong point. Scenic drives are abundant amidst rivers and waterfalls. You may even see an elk or two. In town, the historic district of Eureka Springs is practically an artisan village. You'll find all sorts of things to do, from plays to quaint bars. Next, grab your pass passport because we're heading to India. Assam is closer to the Himalayas than the Taj Mahal, which keeps this part of India decidedly off the beaten track. Great for a post-pandemic adventure. Ecotourism is the main reason to visit with an abundance of wild animals. You can search for an Indian one-horned rhinoceros at Kazuranga National Park or explore evergreen forests at the Hulangar Par Gibbon Sanctuary. The same fertile ground that makes it a good home for wildlife also makes the region ideal for farming, so why not add a tea plantation to your stay? The estates are beautiful and can also be a great way to enjoy some of the smaller villages in northeast India. Have you ever been to India? Talking about tea, we're heading to England next, so stay tuned. Banksy fans may already be aware of what a great destination Bristol is. The street art is phenomenal, of course, but it's time for the rest of the world to catch on. Due west from London, Bristol is a mid-sized city with a unique identity and lively atmosphere, and a really fun local accent. Deciding what to do can be difficult, but visitors should include touring Brunel's SS Great Britain and the flagship M Shed Museum to start. Fans of the hit Netflix show Bridgerton can take a day trip to Bath 15 minutes away to see filming sites in person. One of Bristol's best kept secrets, East Bristol is the getaway to gorgeous countryside, wildlife, and walks if you are that way inclined. Time to grab your big coat, we're going north next. Antarctica tends to get all the attention but you'll enjoy many of the same benefits if you head to the other pole region and an exclusive expedition to untouched nature, breathtaking scenery, and astounding wildlife. The Canadian High Arctic also provides a glimpse into Inuit culture and history. No, we don't call the Eskimos anymore. The extreme cold is easily balanced out by the awesome beauty. Opting for the Arctic can also be much more accessible. Group packages often meet in Toronto instead of Patagonia for the Antarctic, so flying easy. Easy. On cruises, seasickness is less of a factor and itineraries start at only a week for travelers pressed for time. Prices are lower too, despite offering an unforgettable experience. One for the Uber adventurers now. How's your Uzbek? Travelers who wish to explore Central Asia will find Uzbekistan to be one of the easiest stands, admittedly along with Kazakhstan, for independent tourism. The capital city, Tashkent, has an easy-to-manage metro system and high-speed rail links from the city do other must-visit destinations like Samarkand and Bukhara. Mosques and mausoleums dazzle with beautiful designs, making the architecture a draw as much as its Silk Road history and culture. Slightly off the standard tourist trail, I mean, you are in Uzbekistan, so that shouldn't be an issue, right? The western Tian Shan Mountains are perfect for outdoor activities. Shoot across the country and the nearly dry Aral Sea hosts a weirdly eerie graveyard of former cargo ships, a must-see. One for the beach Beach bums next, stay with us. With a mild climate, Uruguay makes a great all year round visit with more to do than you have time for. The coastline tends to get the most visitors, maybe rightly so, and with Punta del Este's fabulous beaches and epic nightlife, no wonder that's where many travelers start. Other highlights of the country include picturesque Colonia, a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its many historic buildings and idyllic cobblestone streets. An hour away, the town of Carmelo has been up and coming for a few years now, but hasn't quite taken off. Go now while you can still enjoy the peaceful countryside, blossoming wine scene, and steakhouses galore.
explore. While you're in South America, we might as well head to Peru next. Punta Sal Beach is one of the best beaches we've come across so far. Nestled in the very north of the country near the Ecuadorian border, it boasts miles of pristine sand. Only an hour's flight plus a bus journey from Lima, you also have Mancora just down the coast for the party animal in you. Whilst here, why not go swimming with giant sea turtles or get your surf on some of the world's best waves? Saddle up, we're going on a safari next, so don't go anywhere. Botswana's zebra migration isn't well known, probably because for a long time, it was hindered by cattle fencing that had cut off migration routes. With the fences now having been removed, 25,000 or more zebras migrate each year to take advantage of lush green feeding grounds, a sight to see indeed. Booking a trip to see this spectacular sight is best done with a knowledgeable safari agent. Since the zebras are on the move, you'll need an expert to tell you where to go based on your exact timing. Be aware the migration is most dramatic during the low rainy season season, so choosing navigatable routes and finding open lodges is also a consideration. Have you ever been on safari? Can you recommend a place? Tell us below. Another one for the off-the-beaten-track fans now. For such a small country, Luxembourg certainly punches above its weight. You can drive from north to south in just over an hour, but in between you'll see medieval castles, untouched nature, and historic tunnels. Stay in Luxembourg City if you want to see the old and new juxtaposed, or head to Fairy Tale Vianden if you prefer for a smaller town. Believe it or not, Lutzenborg has its own airport with flights to numerous European cities. However, since it borders Belgium, France, and Germany, it can be equally easy to drive in as part of a road trip. Highways and excellent European infrastructure make it easy to visit on your own. Where is the most obscure place you've been? Let's head east now. Are you ready? Move over Bali. Lombok is where you should head if you want tropical relaxation without being overrun by tourists and global brands. You'll find surf breaks, a looming volcano, waterfalls, beaches, and temples, and super cheap places to eat great food. Right now, flights to Lombok are only from a handful of international gateways such as Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. Most people fly or ferry in from elsewhere in Indonesia. Because of that, Lombok is relatively unknown to tourists, so make sure to get there before it becomes overrun. While we're in Asia, let's pop over to Korea. Korea, long dismissed by travelers who opt for the more well-known Japan and China, is a jewel of East Asia. Start in Seoul, where you can visit traditional Nam Diak Mon and Dong Mok Mon markets. Then head to Jung No for some superb traditional Korean food. Kimchi always comes as standard with every meal and for free. Then jump on the KTX, Korea's high-speed rail service, and go south. You have your pick of either Busan for the beach and the islands or the more historic Jeonju, where you can visit temples and eat traditional bim bam bap. The choice is yours. Just don't drink too much soju. Fancy a city break? Let's head to Bucharest next then. Having long forgotten communism, Bucharest is a super choice for a weekend European getaway. It sits on the picturesque Dombovita River, roughly 40 miles north of the Danube. So why not grab a coffee at one of the mini riverside cafes, or jump on one of the city's free walking tours where you can learn about the history of the region. Jump on a train and head north to Brom Castle next, home of Brom Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> Spooky. Bucharest also serves as an excellent base if you have a little longer. Romania is bordered by no less than five countries and has many more within a short distance. Where's your favorite city break destination? Finally, another one for the adventure in you, so stay with us. Every winter, there are super cheap airfares from the U.S. to China, and now you have a reason to go. Harbin's International Ice and Snow Sculpture Festival is the largest and most elaborate in the world. Think the Ice Hotel and James Bond die another day. A modified version was held in 2021, so it's relatively safe to expect it'll occur again in 2022. Although this festival is amazing every year, the timing of next year's event lines up well to combine with a trip to the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, an easy two-hour flight south. What more can you ask for? Do you have any tips for a post-pandemic trip? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thanks for tuning in and feel free to leave your own thoughts and opinions on what we've covered today. Comment section. Don't forget to tune in next time, guys.